Welcome to another episode of Beads Development. Today we're going to look at making a app that I call Robin Hoodie, which is a kind of a subset of the Robin Hood stock trading app. Now we're going to build it for the web first and then we'll do the mobile version, but it's going to be pretty much the same code, just we're just going to change how we draw it for the web. Now let's talk about how we're going to build the software. Normally you build a program in multiple stages. And the key thing in building software efficiently is to do it a stage at a time and make sure that each stage is completed before you build on top of it. Because if you try to build all the stages at once, you will have errors spread across all of the sta layers of your system. And when you encounter an error at the top, it might actually be caused by something deep down in a lower layer. So you want to debug each layer first before continuing. So this is the most efficient way to build software where you spend the least amount of time searching for your error. Let's peek ahead and look at our running program. You can see there's an animated kind of electrocardiogram kind of graph scrolling across and then the stocks are listed and you have two different portfolio button selections and you can connect or disconnect from the server. Now to support this app, I've drawn a little diagram of the data structures. And whenever you see a kind of a triangle structure with lines in it, that's, that's the symbol for an array of something. And then anything that's in a little oval is a terminal node having a value. Is it a string? Is it a number? Is it a time? Because everything in this app is, is one of those three, three, three types. So the global data, the, our state for this app, consists of a time when we were updated and then there's an array of portfolios and then inside each portfolio there's a label for them, the name for the portfolio which you call a label and then there's an array of stocks and then in each stock there is a symbol and the average price the high level price and the low price for the time period we're talking about and then there's another thing called the history and the history is an array of, pri of prices and dates, that when and the price. So you might store the last 50 prices for this stock. That's the stock history. We take that diagram and we change the graphical form into textual. And so this is the text that represents the data structures for this Robin Hoodie app. We have a record of a day price which is a price and when it happened. Then we have a record of a stock. It has the symbol, the average, the high, the low, the range, the start, and then the array of the his price history. And then we have a portfolio, which has got a label and then the array of stocks. And then G, which is the name of our state record. I typically use G because it's a nice short letter for and it kind of means global mutable state. And then, uh, then we have a variable for the connection. We're going to use that connect to the server. And then we're going to have a record for the interface, which is our UI, which is not the state of our system. This is the state of the user interface, which is not our stock prices. That's kept on the server. The interface is going to be kept on the client side. Then the next phase is after we've defined our data structures, now we create some code that creates a fake stock portfolio. So we basically create two different portfolio names, individual, individual account, retirement account, and then inside them I create a stock and I, I use a noise function to create some kind of history for the stock so that I can generate at least you know, 20 or 30 prices so that I can see if my graphing code works or not. The key part of the graphing code is the grid and then the lines drawn in it. This section of the code is just draw, looping through the horizontal and vertical lines to put in the grid lines. And then the second part is to draw the data points of the pricing. This section of the code is drawing the data points of the stock price. So I calculate the XY coordinate 
of each of the data points in the history and then I just draw a line from the previous point to the next point and therefore you get a kind of a line graph of the price history and I start from the right and go backwards because this is an like an EKG diagram that's moving to the right and when you start you're not going to have a full set of data points you're just going to have a few data points and you want those to start on the right hand side now that we have the static drawing working we then want the stock prices to start to fluctuate so we set up a loom timer which is going to say okay call back the functions tick stock and do it uh, every two tenths of a second I don't like it five times a second and inside tick stock what we're going to do is we're going to loop across each of the stocks in the portfolio and we're going to add a new price to the stock and if the number of prices we've already stored is greater than the maximum history we want to store which I think is 50 in this case we delete the old price the first price so we keep adding to the end and removing from the front and then the jiggle price is just going to use Perlin noise to create a nice looking fluctuation after we put in this timer we can see the price is fluctuating and so now we are our basic program is running fine on the local client machine with the data being fabricated on the client side. Now we're going to move this client code that generated the prices and sets the data up and we're going to move that to the server module. The server module is going to be compiled and run on a different computer and then the client is going to subscribe to it. So all we're going to do is add one line of code called subscribe to the server where we give it our ID and IP address and then once it connects it's going to start receiving our data structure every so often during refresh cycle and then the screen will be refreshed to match the data structures that just got updated in the background. In these few minutes we've just shown you the basics of how to build a client server program in bees. It's really easy compared to many other systems that have complicated frameworks. And we hope you give bees a take it for a spin and give us some feedback. Please visit us on our Discord group and we look forward to hearing from you.